Hello my dear students, uh, today I will be discussing about uh, spillways. Uh, what is spillway? What are the different types of spillways and what are the requirements of spillways? Uh, when uh, the water in the reservoir increases, the large accumulation of water endangers the stability of the dam structure. To avoid this, a structure is provided in the body of a dam or near the dam or periphery of the reservoir. This structure is called as spillway. You can see here, this is a spillway. You can see here, this is a spillway. Mainly, it is provided in the body of the dam or near the dam or periphery of the dam. Okay, uh, so uh, it is uh, mainly to avoid the accumulation of the water you can see here these are the different uh, pictures of uh, spillways you can see here here this and here here and here a spillway is the overflow portion of dam over which surplus discharge flows from the reservoir to the downstream so, it can be defined as a structure constructed at or near the dam site to dispose of surplus water from the reservoir to the channel downstream. Spillway is essentially a safety wall for a dam. This is a cross section of the spillway. Spillway, this is spillway crest and hydraulic jump and this is the tail water. This is the flow of water, stilling basin can see here this is a spillway it is a structure which will not let the water rise above the maximum reservoir level spillways are provided for all dams as a safety measure against overtopping and the consequent damages and failure a spillways acts as a safety wall for the dam as I said earlier because as soon as the water level in the reservoir rises above a predetermined level, excess water is discharged safely to the downstream channel and the dam is not damaged. Location of spillway. Generally, the spillways are provided at the following places. The first one is spillways may be provided within the body of the dam. Spillways may sometimes be provided at one side or both sides of the dam. Sometimes bypass spillway is provided which is completely separate from the dam. These are the locations of the spillway. Let us uh, see what are the requirements of spillway. The spillway should have sufficient capacity. It should provide structural stability to dam under all conditions, able to pass the designed flood without rising the water level above HFL, high flood level. The location of spillway should provide safe disposal of water without tow erosion. Spillway should be hydraulically and structurally efficient in operation. Usually, spillway should be accomplished by an energy dissipation work on its downstream side and also it should be economical. These are the requirements of spillway. Let us see some essentials of a spillway. Okay. Adequate capacity to serve as moderation of floods. While conveying the excess flows downstream, the tail water maintained is such that the purpose and protection of dam and its appurtenant work are fully ensured. Providing safe and regulated release of the surplus water in excess of the reservoir capacity. Hydraulically and structurally, the spillways bounding surfaces are adequate and are erosion resistant to withstand high scouring velocities created by drop of flow from reservoir surface to tail water. Device for the dissipation of energy at the bottom of dam is provided. The spillway size and type depends on the best combination of storage and spillway capacity to accommodate the selective inflow design flood, which in turn depends on the characters, the character of the flood hydrography 
effect of various stamps and spillways combination on probable increase or decrease or damage above or below the dam. Use of combined outlet facilities to serve as control of release and control of passage of floods. These are the some of the essentials of a spillway. Spillway capacity. Sufficient capacity of spillway is of uh, paramount importance, especially in earth and rock filled dams where overtopping may be very dangerous. A spillway must have the capacity to discharge major floods without damage to the dam or any operating and structures at the same time keeping the reservoir level below some predetermined maximum level. The desired flood discharge required to be passed over the spillway can be determined by flood routing. In addition to providing sufficient capacity, the spillway must be hydraulically and structurally adequate and must be located so that spillway does not erode or undermine the downstream of the dam. Let us discuss about the component parts of spillway. There are uh, different parts. The first one is approach channel. Next is control structure, discharge carrier, discharge channel, energy dissipators. So these are the main component parts of a spillway. Let us discuss one by one. The first one is approach channel. You can see here, this is a approach channel. It is an entrance structure or the path to draw water from reservoir and convey it to the control structure, this part. Okay. The approach channel may be straight or curved in plan. Its banks may be parallel, convergent, divergent or combination of this and may be vertical or sloping. It may ensure minimum head loss through the channel and to obtain uniformity of flow over the control structure. Second one is control structure. You can see here these are the control structure. It consists of a wheel which may be sharp. It is a major component of a spillway. It regulates and controls the surplus water from the reservoir. It does not allow the discharge of water below the fixed reservoir level. It allows only when water surface in the reservoir rises above that level. It consists of any overflow crest provided with a bridge and gates to regulate and control the overflow from the reservoir. These are the control structures. You can see here and you can see here, you can see here. Next one is discharge carrier. Here you can see discharge carrier. You can see here discharge carrier. It is the waterway provided to convey the flows released from the control structure to the river below the dam. The profile may be variable, flat or steep. The cross section may be rectangular, trapezoidal, circular or of other shape and the waterway may be wide or narrow, long or short. Discharge channel. This is a discharge channel. Discharge channel, discharge channel. It is provided to convey the surplus water released through control structure to the stream bed below the dam safely. The discharge channel may be the downstream phase of the spillway itself or open channel excavated along the ground surface or a closed conduit placed through or under a dam. The width of the discharge channel depends on amount of water to be conveyed. Next one is energy dissipators. At the end of discharge carrier, the water released from control structure has great velocities, enough to cause scour. Thus, energy dissipators are provided to avoid the scouring of downstream side of spillway. 
high voltage water coming through spillway may cause serious damage to the toe of dam and to the adjacent structures. This high energy of flow must be dissipated before it flows back to river. For this energy dissipators, for this energy dissipators are provided on the downstream side of the spillway. The following are the different types of dissipators. The first one is bucket type energy dissipators. Second one is stilling basin type dissipators. Third one is baffle type dissipators. Let us see the first one, bucket type dissipators. You can see here, this is looks like a bucket. Okay. Uh, here, the high kinetic energy of water is reduced by providing a hydraulic jump at the end of spillway. The hydraulic jump can be achieved by providing bucket type dissipators. By hydraulic jump of water, some part of energy is dissipated by aeration. This is about bucket type dissipators. Next one is stilling basin type dissipators. This is stilling basin type dissipators. Stilling basins are usually provided after the bucket. Due to the hydraulic jump of water, the water falling on the ground may cause cavitation on the ground. These cavitation can be avoided by providing the stilling basin. The stilling basin consists of water which reduces some part of energy of water. Okay? This is about stilling basin. Next one is buffel type dissipators. You can see here, these are the buffel type of structures. After passing the stilling basin, water has still some energy. If any amount of energy exit, exists, it can be fully dissipated by providing baffle dissipators. In this, baffle type structures are provided in a number of series depending on the amount of energy. This is about uh, baffle type dissipators. So, uh, I think all of you now understood what is spillway and what are the requirements and what are the essentials of spillway and what are the components of spillway. Next lecture, we'll discuss about what are the different types of spillways. Thank you.